What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today it is episode 55 of the Vikings franchise series, and we are back in the offseason coming off of our first Super Bowl victory on the channel. And I'm excited for this one, guys, because you guys know I've been sort of already discussing with you guys some of the stuff that I want to do this this offseason. And I feel that now, now that we have, you know, won the Super Bowl, we can really play with this roster. We've gotten one out of the way. I have a couple players on the on the block that I really want to move on from. And I also have a lot of stuff for other teams that I'm already preparing to do as well that I think is going to be really cool to, you know, switch things up and make some other teams more competitive. And that's what I've been noticing the most with my franchises. I just spent an entire day yesterday going through every team and writing down like their schemes, their team needs, um, you know, trying to get prepped for the draft, re-signings, releases, all of that stuff. And one thing I've noticed, there are not many teams that are drastically below our overall. Everybody seems to have a solid team to, to play with. And that's what I want. I don't want us to be able to just win every game. I don't want us to just run through the competition all the time. I want there to be challenges. So I'm just really happy that we've been able to do that. And I hope that this continues. I'm hoping some of the moves I do this off season with the other teams are also gonna help with that scenario because there's some players stuck on teams right now that I don't know if they're gonna get a chance to start ever. And I don't want that, you know? If this was real life, there are players that'll be like, dude, I don't wanna play here. I'm not playing. And, and I'll show you an example. And this starts with the Tennessee Titans. Nate Hillman has been here for four years and he's been behind Derrick Henry the whole time. Derrick Henry still has three years left on his contract. He's 31, yes he is, but he's Derrick freaking Henry. He's a 95 overall. It's the Titans guy, you know? Hillman's over here like, my whole career is gonna be gone before I even get started if I don't leave here. In real life, if this was real life, this is exactly what a running back would say. So I'm thinking of this offseason, moving him to another team that needs a playmaker at running back because this guy, I mean, this guy could be great. 88 overall, look at his 93 speed, 94 acceleration, 93 agility. He's got some X, 95 change of direction. This guy's got some great attributes and he's just sitting on the bench. I just, I don't know if I can keep him here. And then look at when he has gotten playing time. Two years ago, he had 15 touchdowns. 15 as a backup. 11 last year, and then this year he still had nine. So, so that's one of the things that I'm looking for all the time with these teams is players that are stuck behind certain players that if this was real life, would want to move on in that scenario. They'd want to go somewhere else and try and start. So I have a few, I have a decent list of guys made up that I want to try and find homes for, and we'll see if we can come up with something. So this should be another really long video, but I think it's gonna be great video. I think it's gonna have a lot of stuff. Before we even get started though, I need y'all to drop that like and hit that sub button if you're not already, all right? Help me out, come on now, put it down there. But anyway, so as you can see here, I'm in the re-signed players uh, stage already. There's nothing to do in the staff week. I'm the coach on all the teams. We're not, I, I mean, it's, there's just no point, you know? I, I just, I sim past it. We're here, we have the mock draft number three. We have the retirements. And I wanted to go over those first before we go to the free agency. Cause there, I've done all the re-signings for every team already. I did this all throughout the season. So there is nobody left for me to re-sign for the Vikings or any other team in the file. So without further ado, let's get this thing started off with the retirement. Top of the list, you can see that Morgan Moses, the right tackle we signed midway through the season just as a, as a filler, he is retired. So we will have to replace him. Levante David retired, Kyle Juszczyk, Brandon Sheriff. That was that was a surprise to me. I did not see him. I actually had to update my Chargers players of need after this because I, I didn't see him retiring. Mitch Morse retired, Fletcher Cox finally retired, Ryan Tannehill retired, Quandre Diggs, Teron Armstead, Marcus May, Stephon Gilmore, 
Jake Matthews, another one that sort of surprised me. I know it's been 12 years, but I didn't see him retiring yet, so I have to go back and check on the Falcons to see if now they need a left tackle really bad or not. Brett Kern, Javon Hargrave, Bryce Callahan, Zach Banner, Wes Schweitzer, George Fant, David Onyemeta, Sammy Watkins, Matthew Judon, Kyle Fuller, Ricardo Allen, Micah Hyde, a lot of them. Jamal Williams, Michael Schofield, Kirk Cousins, finally hanging it up, Austin Blythe, Jimmy Ward, Dante Hightower, DJ Fluker. I mean, just look at this list. It's not everybody's a household name, but a lot of these guys, I think everybody's going to, you know, the name will ring a bell if you follow the NFL. Justin Jackson, after eight years, was was very surprising. Like, I know he never really evolved into a starter, but to see, to see him retire was was weird. As much as I want to handle free agency for all the teams, I sort of don't either. <laughs> um, there's only so much that I can really do in my time. You know what I mean? Like I I I spent about six hours, six seven hours yesterday straight just going through every team all the way from the bears down to us well not us because i already know us but the titans and i will look through their entire roster i adjusted their schemes to fit the players they had so hopefully you know if their players changed or something some teams somehow were out of scheme even though i swear to god i set them up last year but either way all the teams are set up to be the most potential based off of their playbook and their players. And I made all the decisions for the teams already. Some surprise players are going to be in free agency. Some veterans are going to be in free agency as teams transition to the younger talent that has been behind them. And then before we get to the resign or the free agency stage, there's a couple of stories here. First one is Tennessee quarterback Nick Taylor has one of many college all-stars displaying their talents this week and ultimately shined brightest, taking home the MVP. And then we had a couple of other ones here. Every QB prospect must look at the All-Star Week Richard Miller had as a template for how to improve their draft stock. Another one from Bucky Brooks there. Hope to see more separation from tight end Alex Hopkins during the All-Star game, but I'm not sure he won a single rep. And then another notch on the belt for the storied college career of quarterback Nick Taylor as he is named the All-Star Game MVP. So there's a lot of quarterbacks getting a lot of hype but there's really not much need in our file for one so christian clark has been the the top guy all the way through there's chris whitfield jamichael armstead who we had a story on earlier this year now nick taylor's shoots up to the second uh, rounds two to three prospect ryan clifford had one way earlier this year and richard miller was the one who just had that other story who won the all-star mvp shot up to rounds three to four so now there's another group of quarterbacks here, but I really don't know if more than maybe two teams are going to take one. I just don't see much of a need for them. A lot of the league has their guy right now. And here we can see the next mock draft that has come out since the end of the season. I don't foresee this going the way they do, of course. Um, the, the Rams actually have defensive ends. They don't need Marcus McElroy. Christian Clark, he was, they just drafted a quarterback last year, so it does not make sense for the Broncos to take a, a quarterback again. They got that one right, but that's because he's on our board, and that's probably what we're going to end up doing with our third selection is taking Clayton Jenkins. Kyle Barnett, it's either, they have the Rams taking two defensive ends, so it's just not going to happen. You know, it's just, it's just not going to happen. <laughs> they have the Seahawks taking a right tackle. This might be the first spot where a quarterback go this might be where christian clark goes because the seahawks i mean russell wilson is like 38 in this game you know and they don't have another option behind him the rams having two top four picks though is very very important for them because they need some serious playmakers so who knows maybe we'll, we'll see what happens maybe they end up taking one of these top defensive ends you know i i, I don't know what they what their plan is but it's going to be a good thing for them to get these key pieces up front in the draft here when I also have an idea of maybe doing some trade ups and trade downs for some teams because like let's look at the Broncos right they don't need a quarterback they don't need a defensive end they don't need edge rushers because they actually have quite a few young ones on the team already but there's teams down here you know like maybe like the Cardinals or the Patriots uh, the Cowboys 
uh, the Ravens, the Titans. You know, there's a lot of teams, you know, midway through the draft that desperately need defensive ends. So it might be smart for a team like the Broncos to trade down, acquire those extra picks, still end up getting the guy that they could use most and allowing one of these other teams to move up to get the guy they really want. So that's something we're going to be looking out for. Um, I'm not going to be trading down out of three. I just know that already. I'm going to take Clayton Jenkins. I've been pounding the table for this guy since we we saw the draft class. And it's actually worked out to where he is one of the best talents in this draft. Top five talent. I'm taking him. I don't even care what it, what happens during the draft. He's our guy. He's going to be a Viking. So, yeah, there, there it is. We're taking him over Jalen McCain. I know McCain had sort of that, uh, that bad story about injuries, but he's still listed as a top corner. I don't care. Jenkins is the guy. He always was. He's like This is like the draft day thing. No matter what, so-and-so. And ours is Clayton Jenkins. We're going to take him. But anyway, a lot of that stuff is going to end up happening behind the scenes. And I'll just tell you about it after the fact it happens. Or I'll walk through the process of it. But, but for right now, let's go ahead and let's get to free agency week one. And see what's out there for available talent. I think before we get to free agency and adding players to this team... I think we really need to take a deep dive of this team and decide what we want to do with, with some of our positions. So, we all know what happened. Tyrone Bullard came in, and, and he won us the Super Bowl. He came in late during the season, and, you know, we can give Hopkins some credit for getting us to that point to put us in the position for Bullard to succeed. But at the end of the day, our team transformed offensively after Bullard came in. And Hopkins is just not the guy for us. And this leaves us to a a very, very good problem to have. We have a quarterback that we could trade to fuel our future for years to come. Taylor Hopkins is a 90 overall superstar quarterback at just 24 years old. 24. And we have the option to trade him, which is really the only option. But... In order for this to be fair, I have to make sure that I'm not fleecing any teams. So let me go ahead and pull up my fancy little, my trade chart here that I found on Reddit. Where the heck is that thing? Oh, I'm looking in the wrong spot. So his his cap hit right now is about 10 million, which isn't bad. And he is ranked as the number 14 quarterback in the league. So he alone is worth, according to this calculator, 2,000. 267 points and there's one team that i can think of that we can trade him to that immediately gets what they need i think the most and is out of our conference that's the tennessee titans i've looked through other teams and i'm gonna go down the list of teams that could use him the first team i thought of was the new york giants but they just drafted sean stevenson a year ago daniel jones is still here and that's inside of the same conference. And I really don't know if I want to trade him there. I'm not even going to mention this as an option, but just so you guys know, he probably would have fit here, but there's no way that's happening. Caleb Mobley, let's just take our bias out of it, right? That it's the Packers. Caleb Mobley is here. He's a 77. He's going to end up passing Jordan Love soon. They're good at quarterback. I also thought of the Seahawks, but then I said to myself, forget that. I'm not going to trade him to the Seahawks. And then we come down to the Titans. The Titans tried both Mills and Gonzalez last year. Neither one worked. They had a down year. They have a decent offense, but they need a, a quarterback, and they don't have one. Now, of course, I'm going to get their first-round pick this year. I'm, I'm probably going to get their first-round pick next year. This is a 90 overall quarterback we're talking about. So let's go ahead and let's do... After putting the trade together, this is what I've come up with as a fair trade. And maybe you guys will agree with me, maybe you guys won't, but I'm using the trade calculator that I found on Reddit. It's a really complex one, which I really enjoy. You plug in everything, like their, you plug in their overall, their age, their position, their, their ranking within the league. Like, you know, I always said that Hopkins is the number 14th ranked quarterback. Uh, their dev, and then it gives you a number for a value. And then basically you just put in your other stuff like the other team stuff, like for the Titans, I did their first, the two first round picks and it gives me a number back. So Taylor Hopkins number up all alone is 2,267.5 points. 
the two first round picks is 2010 points, 2010.3 points. So, so all in all, this, this is a fair trade. It says I'm losing some here, but I'm gaining two first round picks off a quarterback. We're not going to resign. Now, could I make them pay more? Like in real life, would the Titans have to pay more for this guy? Absolutely. Absolutely. They would. They'd probably have to give up a third, a third first round pick or maybe a, a key player. But we we have limitations in Madden, and I'm not trying to ruin teams either, but this is going to fix the Titans offense. H Hopkins was a problem for us. He might not be a problem for the Titans. You know, they run a different offense. They have different players. They have different coaches, different schemes, everything. So it might be a, a great fit for Hopkins, but we know that he's done here. Our guy is Bullard. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull the trigger on this trade to start off our free agency is we're going to trade Taylor Hopkins to the Tennessee Titans for their first round pick this year and their first round pick next year. And there it is. Taylor Hopkins is no longer a Viking. Well, this team looks a heck of a lot different now without without Hopkins here, but he already was gone. He was gone in my mind after we benched him. And I saw what Bullard could do. That game against the Steelers is what had me sold on Bullard. The first game against the Steelers. That he fought back, you know, he came out horrible first quarter, but he came back and we won that game. I have to, I have to ride with him. And I think you guys all agree. So Hopkins is now a member of the Tennessee Titans. And Bullard is now the guy going forward. And there he is, Taylor Hopkins, now a member of the Tennessee Titans, instantly upgrades this team by a lot. We have three first round picks now. We really have the ability to do whatever we want at this point and now it comes down to taking a look at the rest of this roster so i mean maybe i should have done this first but it, it is what it is so we have bullard and we have benji barnett as our quarterbacks we might end up bringing in another guy just to compete for the backup role of course our running back room is stacked glover pitts rutherford baldwin these are guys that were on the practice squad. They probably won't make it past preseason, but we'll keep them on just so that we have the extra bodies. At wide receiver, I talked about this before, and it is time for us to move on from Derek Wilcox. Um, there's not going to be a market for him, though. There's so many good receivers, so we're just going to let him go into free agency. I already let go of of Taven Smith. Ken, Kenny Williams is a guy moving forward. I liked Derek Wilcox at first. I liked his big body style of play, but he just never really... He never really, I mean, he made plays for us, but he didn't really ever show out for us. So for that reason, we're going to go ahead and we're going to release Derek Wilcox into free agency. And that's really going to open up our receiver room. Because now, of course, we have Peoples and Jefferson. I think Williams is going to end up outshining Whiting soon. And what I would like to do with that is I would actually like to try Timmy Peoples in the slot at that point. As the main slot receiver, have Kenny Williams play outside where he can use his, his size and then Jason Johnson, I think, is a good option um, behind him. And then we have a few younger guys, Jalen Turner, Kendrick Wilson, and John Bullitt. And who knows, what if we bring in a late-round prospect or something just to see, to round out our receiver room for preseason. Tight ends, we are good there, man. We have such good tight end room. I honestly wish I could get Wiggins some more playing time because I really like his play. But, it, you know, it, it is what it is. Our line is good at left tackle. We have Derisaw. We're obviously good at left guard. Center, Michael Mahan has has really shined and, and shown through. This is our one spot here on the offensive side of the ball, right guard. Mike Lewis right now is slated to be the starter. I would like to bring in somebody else to, to fight for that position. And also, you know, groom one of these two guys him and the other guy for the left guard position that Nelson is eventually going to leave open. And then Whitley has turned into a pretty good guard for us as well, but we do need some depth in the line. That's one thing that I've noticed. We're getting old on the line. Um, it would be nice if we could find a backup center to start growing behind Mahan instead of Billy Price. He's going to start He's going to start regressing, of course, soon. And then we need, I would say we need a guard and a tackle at the minimum. I would like to get two guards, though or a guard, a center, and a tackle. So one of every position, basically. Defensive line is set. We have Hunter and Menical. I love Menical. I want to get him involved more, but it just it's hard to sometimes. And then on this side, we got Martin Jefferson, Randy Barrett, Will Brayman, and then Thomas Poole, who was on our practice squad. 
I'm not sure what we're going to do with these guys yet, but at this point, we have no, no, you know, we're not looking to move any of these guys. They're all here for the long haul. Randy Barrett's going to be like our, um, the guy that just continues to be on our rotation for us. At D tackle, I would like to possibly bring in some competition for TJ Slayton, but overall, I do like Coleman and, and where, of course, those guys are going to be our, our front for a long time. Whitehead moved to superstar. I don't know if you guys saw that during the pre or during the postseason, but he moved to superstar now, and I think that's well deserved. He played phenomenal for most of the season. He was t causing turnovers left and right. He was always there making plays. I was really happy to see him get pushed up to superstar. Najee Harrison behind him. I think he's a good guy to keep building up. In the middle, AJ Alexander is still here, and I know I've talked about not you know bringing him back and. You know, potentially looking at other suitors like Deion Lewis, but he he actually he played pretty well for us down the stretch. After those comments I made, he started making a lot more plays, getting in you know, behind the line. But we'll see. I really still like Deion Lewis. He's not that far behind. And if you look here, Alexander's really an 82 overall, and Lewis is a 77. So they're actually closer than it looks like. We also have Roy Lewis. And Romeo Whiteside. And then, of course, Jeremy Chin. We decided not to bring back uh, Jalen Smith. So we we will likely try to bring in a linebacker. Otherwise, we do have some options down here we can move outside. Like, Roy Lewis might be a good option to move outside. Oh, gosh. You can't wear 28, dude. We'll be changing that for sure. And then we get to the cornerback position. And you guys know what's coming, man. Mike Hughes has got to go. I don't care. We got to take a $3 million penalty. This guy's got to go, all right? He he does nothing but take advantage of the glitchy hitch route animation interceptions, and, and then he gets beat on every other route. This one, we're definitely probably not going to get much in return for because there are a lot of good young corners and his age, which that's just something that I, I'm okay with. But we have, we have McElroy, Reddick, and I've been saving this to tell you guys, because this this floored me when I saw it earlier uh, yesterday when I was going through stuff. So I was looking, and I didn't pay attention to the hidden development guys, you know, running out because some of them just didn't start, so they didn't get a lot of playing time, and their hidden development stayed all season. Floyd Beckwith was one of them. You guys want to know what he ended up being? Floyd Beckwith ends up with superstar development, and it's almost too fitting. It's almost too fitting. I was concerned with our corners. I wanted to see what Beckwith could do. I wanted to see what some of these other guys that we have, like um, Jason Reddick could do. Reddick never really lived up to that hype, though. And that's why I want to go get Clayton Jenkins, get that tall, lengthy corner. But now if Beckwith is a superstar. We got to get this guy in the field, man. So Hughes is out of here. Like, I was already sold on getting rid of him. But now, knowing Beckwith is a superstar, just get out of here, man. Just, just leave. That is our next move. We still have Tim Sims and then Sheldon Jenkins, who was on our practice squad as well. Jason Reddick is here. Cam Curl, Cam Bynum, and Jalen Carter all at free safety. And then Nazir Ward and Josh Metellus at strong safety. So this roster is very stacked. And I think it's time for us to, to off ourselves on some of these players that, you know, maybe didn't live up to hype. And Mike Hughes is definitely one of them. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to see what kind of market we have for a trade and which team could really use his services. I would like to stick to a team who actually is contending because of his age. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look through the teams that are picking in the 20s. 20s are back that need a corner. The Jaguars could be a sneaky option here. They have older guys in Shaquille Griffin and Dante Jackson. But their second biggest need is corner, and I have them pegged as needing a corner pretty bad. That would allow them to move on from a guy like Jackson and then let Marshall, Marshall Riddick and Steven Chamberlain work themselves into the mix a little bit more. Or maybe even Shaquille Griffin or heck, maybe even both of them. It would give them a clear cut number one. I say we move him over to the Jaguars. So let's go over here. Okay, so he's an X Factor. So even with that age, his point system is only 583, which I, I expected that. I really, I did expect that because I mean, he's an older guy. You know what I mean? 
So we have that here. We know the Jaguars are the team we are going to trade him to. I think this right here is a fair trade. Uh, Mike Hughes goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and we and we get in return a fourth round pick that they got from the Rams. So it's actually a, a top fourth, and then a late fifth. I, I put it through the trade calculator once again. We are giving up more than we need to, but I just think that with his age and with what other teams, you know, sort of can get, it makes sense. But this team isn't going to be able to get one of the top flight corners, I don't think. So I think this is a smart move. It's not a bad move for the Jaguars. They get a great corner. Yes, we're going to take a cap hit from it, but yeah, he's 29. We're not going to get a first round pick out of him just because he's an X factor. So we're going to go ahead. And we're going to make this trade and the Jaguars are going to get a pretty solid corner to allow them to build up the rest of their their defensive back room. And there you have it. Mike Hughes is now a Jaguar. First look at him in a Jags uniform. I like the move. I think it was needed. We've seen how many times this guy has put us in rough spots. But the Jaguars had a, a serious need for a top corner, and they get one now. Our next step here in the process is to get some of these guys off of teams that are just being buried right now. Nate Hillman was one of the guys that I mentioned before. The Titans, you know, they just got a superstar quarterback in Taylor Hopkins. They really are, are in win-now mode. They're trying to get the best out of Derrick Henry while he's still here. So in order to do that, they're going to go ahead and they're going to let Nate Hillman go to another team where he can be the guy and they're gonna get some draft capital for it. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna end up trading with the Arizona Cardinals who ne that desperately need a running back. I think their running back right now is Marlon Mack who stopped being good like three years ago on the Dolphins for our series anyway. And um, it gets another pick back for the Titans who just lost a pick of course to us to allow them to continue to build their team up a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do this trade with the Cardinals. I did run it through and it is a it's it's like right on the edge of being fair but it's it's leaning towards the cardinals by like 20 points 694 is the total for the second round pick and then that was like 720 722.5 is what it's given me for nate hillman because of his ranking in the league and whatnot lamar hunter is another player that needs to get moved now, Lamar Hunter has been the backup for the Packers behind Rashawn Gary for, well, it's to just finish up his third season. And Rashawn Gary is still only 28. He's a 93. And I thought maybe to move him over, but Ethan Merritt has already passed him and he's in that position. So Hunter is just sort of here, but he could be a valuable asset to some of these other teams that desperately need some pass rush. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to trade Lamar Hunter to a team that needs an edge rusher. All right, so after looking at the roster, the Packers, of course, do not have a first round pick this year because they traded it away for that quarterback, Caleb Mobley, but they can get a second second round pick from the Chiefs, a late second at that, but it does give them some flexibility in the draft. And all they have to do is give them Hunter and a fifth round pick for this to be a fair trade. So let's go ahead and let's pull the trigger on that to get the Packers some, uh, some better draft positioning. Now we're going over to the LA Chargers. This team is ready to start transitioning a little bit. And they have a guy by the name of Shaq Seymour. If you remember him, it was one of the guys that we ended up sort of scouting a couple of years back. He is sitting behind Nasir Adderley. And Adderley cannot play strong safety because Derwin James is still there. Adderley, 29, he still is very serviceable safety. The Chargers are looking to move on from him to allow Seymour to come into his own and also see what they can get back in return for him. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can find a trade partner for Nasir Adderley. And of course, once again, because of age, I'm gonna be looking at teams picking in the 20s. So looking now at the trade, I know I got a fourth and a fifth for Mike Hughes. And I know that safety isn't as touted, you know, as, um, as corner is. But Adderley at the safety position is the corners are more saturated than the safeties are, if that makes sense. So 
basically I feel that safeties are going to equal more trade value at this time because there's not an abundance of them whereas corners yes there's there's a lot of veterans out there but there's also a lot of younger guys too and safeties haven't had as many star hits so far throughout our our drafts so because of that I feel Adderley would draw a better market anyway and I think just a fourth round straight up is a pretty decent uh sell for him for the for the for the Eagles they don't give up too much. The Chargers get a decent pick in return. So we're going to go ahead and do the fourth round swap with the Eagles for Nasir Adderley. Another trade that I wanted to do was for Javier Pierre. He is a corner from the Colts, obviously, as you can see. They drafted Justin Robertson last year, who ended up being a superstar corner. And they have Grant Milner. They drafted Anthony Knight last season. They still have Tyson Campbell. They have a lot of up and comers here. And they have needs in other areas, the Colts do. So what I thought would be best was to take Javier Pierre and trade him to a team that has an abundance of maybe edge rushers for them because they need some edge rushers. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to scour and see if we can find something for these guys to get a really good swap for. And I think I found just a team. So the Buccaneers, like I mentioned before, when we we're looking at Mike Hughes, they don't really need veterans, but they need some young people in the secondary. And looking at the Bucks now, they have Sean Murphy Bunting at 29 and Jamel Dean at 29, James Ferguson at 25, but then it's sort of a drop off. They also have Matthew Lofton sitting here, who is pretty much the same age, the same overall, the same everything as Javier Pierre. And he is stuck behind Joe Tryon Shoyenka, who is not giving up that spot anytime soon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a player for player swap with Matthew Lofton and Javier Pierre. Look at that. It's almost too perfect. I think that's a big win for both teams there. The Colts desperately needed outside linebackers. They still have a need, but this at least gives them a, a guy on each side. So good move for the Colts. Good move for the Buccaneers. Okay, so now we're back on our team. That was the last of the trades that I wanted to try and get done for other teams. Um, who knows? There might be some more that happened throughout the draft. And maybe even after the draft. But those were the main ones that I, I saw going through the teams yesterday. I'm like, you know what? These guys really need to, to be moved. They just stuck out like a sore thumb to me. So I'm glad we got that done. A lot of new players in new, new places. So that should be really interesting to see next year. I hope we have some of those matchups against us next year so we can see these new players and see if our trades worked or if i you know didn't help them at all hopefully that's not the case because i am honestly trying to make all the teams competitive i'm not trying to you know screw one team over i mean heck i'm even making trades that make sense for the packers for crying out loud i never thought i'd see the day of that i'm just looking down here to see if i can find anybody that i might want to bring in as competition with benji barnett Ooh, who's chase Steele? Okay, he's normal, but he is only a one-year pro. 6'3", Oh, he's a scrambler. Oh. We're going to try to bring him in on a one-year. Yeah, but I like that. We're going to try to bring in Chase Steele as, a, as another option at quarterback just to battle it out with Benji Barnett. We're not even looking at running backs, guys. Don't even think about it. We really have no need at tight ends for anybody. Bryce Harris is out here, though. I like Bryce Harris. I remember, he played for the Jets. Yeah, he played for the Jets. Ooh, 79 speed. No, thank you. No, thank you. Oh, okay. We have some decent tackles out here. This should be interesting. The Patriots going for Tyron Smith. Liam Eichenberg is in free agency. The Titans are going after him. That's a good fit right there if the Titans can land him. That fixes their left tackle problem. Derek Spruce. That's a young guy. How did he get to free agency? I swear, guys, like I, I go through every one of these teams, but like I guess I'm even surprising myself with some of the guys that end up making it to free agency. There was a reason for it, though. They might have drafted somebody a year prior or a year before him or after him or something like that that made him useless, but there's a reason for it. Our first look here is at guard. We could try to bring in a guy like Wyatt Teller, but I don't really want to spend that much money on a guard, especially at 31. There are a couple of 
decent veteran options, but I mean, if we're going to be toying around with 74s and 75s, I'd rather just at least stick with Mike Lewis and let him develop. Greg Gaither. These are both power guys, though. Let's see. Okay, so they're at least balanced. That's a big man. 6'5", 340 pounds. Wow. He might be a guy we could bring in just as a, uh, you know, throw him at one year. You never know. It could work out. And then we do need backups here. And I'm actually looking here at Rob Havenstein. It would be nice to have a veteran to back up right ta our, our tackle, Craig Whitley. Even if it is just for a year to have that guy. Oh, wait. John McGuire. Is he balanced? John McGuire. Let's see. Can't pass block to save his life. Yeah, injury is 85. Let's see, what is Havenstein? Looking at Havenstein, 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 I don't care. I think he might be the guy for to bring in. We're going to go ahead and we're going to offer him a contract, just a one year, to be our, our uh, reserve. I mean, obviously he's past his starting point. He's 34. He's just looking for one last little, little payday, so we'll give it to him. I love having extra bodies. Marlon Riles. No, we don't need that. Eddie Griffin. No. Ethan Dugan. We sort of have these guys already in Kevin Medical, but I'm still going to look at them. I also mentioned that I want to try to bring in some competition for uh, TJ Slayton. See if there's any other D tackles out here that I would like to pick up to bring in. And so we are going to go down here. Of course, we're not looking for anybody too high overall. Dalton Rutherford. He's already 28, though, and I really don't like that. Ross Playlock. Malcolm Roach. Quincy Page. 26. Oh, he's more like a... He's like a do-everything D-tackle. Sort of like a Kevin Menical type of guy, but at D-tackle. We're gonna bring him. We're gonna we're gonna throw him a contract. Yeah, we'll throw him one. I'm sorry, guys. I know the free agencies aren't very exciting for us, but we did a really good job with trades and free agency and drafting to where the free agency really isn't that big of a deal. So, I mean, if you're looking for big ticket free agents, we're just not seeing that yet. We might in the next couple of years. You never know. I do still feel that we're going to be, like, this year we have $42 million available, but we have some contracts coming up. We really do. Um, so I was, I'm trying to stay pretty timid here and only spend what we need to spend because I don't know when, you know, we're going to get other options to, you know, when we're going to need all of this money. And then here's another area um, outside linebackers. I like to look for extra edge rushers. You never have too many edge rushers. Paul Hopkins is a power rusher. He's got some people looking at him. I'm not looking to put four years, 25 million towards a guy. Good for Washington if they land him. Andrew Elling, another four years. I just found a guy who's a speed rusher. He's only 22 years old. One year pro. I gotta have him. Two years, 4.2. Oh yeah, we're gonna even up it a little bit because I don't want the Texans to get him. Easy money. Landon Riley. All right guys, so after going through all of the free agents and like I said before, I know the free agency is sort of boring. I get it, but you know, we got money we're gonna need. We don't need many positions. We just won the Super Bowl. We, we have, we won it for a reason. We have a good team, but I am looking to bring in a few guys for some depth and for some futures future potential. So Rob Havenstein, definitely a depth guy. I liked having um, Morgan Moses last year just because, you know, in the off chance something happens to Whitley, we have a veteran behind him. Quincy Page, he's going to come in. He's 26 years old. He's been around a little bit. He'll get a chance to compete with TJ Slayton at the tackle. Greg Gaither, he's going to get a chance to come in and compete for our starting job along with whoever we bring in through the draft and Mike Lewis. And they have a couple of options open on the line, so you never know. But he's 27. Chances are he's going to be more of just a filler. Maybe he makes it through preseason. Maybe he doesn't. 
Landon Riley, a future project, found him outside linebacker. Definitely going to be moving him down to a, speed, to a defensive end position, though. And we're going to try to hold on to him if we can land him. And then Chase Steele is another guy we're targeting. Just another you know, body to try and see, make sure we have the best possible backup quarterback available to us. So these are the five we're targeting, probably the only five we'll target all day. And then I'll just be spending the rest of free agency fixing the stuff the computer does that doesn't make any sense. All right, so we got everybody we were looking for. Riley, Steele, Havenstein, Gaither, and Page. So that's awesome. Um, wasn't really too concerned about it. Now that we have done that, uh, let's go ahead and let's see what happened throughout the rest of the free agency and see if there's any moves that I absolutely hate and have to fix. So Joe Tracy, quarterback wise, it does, I mean, there was nobody really out here. Hmm, that's interesting. The Eagles end up getting Ezekiel Elliott. That actually, not too bad of a deal. Sharif Norris goes to the Chargers, which sort of makes sense as well because they have Austin Eckler, who is getting older. Ron Ronald Jones is going to go to the Buffalo Bills. Not really a need there, but a depth guy, I guess, with his age. Michael Carter, same thing with him. Depth guy for the Falcons. Daryl Henderson also goes to the Chargers, so they're really tooling up the, the running back room there. Montel Strickland, our former running back, goes to the Panthers. Nothing else really to mention. Yeah. Jake McDonald, the big fullback who was in free agency. He ends up going to the Bengals. Chris Godwin goes back to Tampa. I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> Chris Godwin is going to go back and team up with Christian Kirk and Mike Evans for another run at it with Tua this time. Wow. Wow. That's funny how things happen. Marquez Callaway is going to Green Bay. Not sure if I really like that move for Green Bay. I'll have to look and see if that's something that I would have done myself. I mean, they have guys there already. I guess it is what it is. It's a three-year contract, though. Miles Boykin going to the Browns. Jalen Rager going to the Patriots. Miller to the Raiders. I really don't like that at all. I'm probably going to undo that one. Will Disley ends up going to the Eagles. They did need tight end help. They'll, he ends up becoming their starter over Frank Platt, who they drafted not that long ago. Tyrone Smith goes to the Rams. I did not see that coming. I mean, the Rams have money, so it makes sense, but I just didn't see that coming from them. Eichenberg goes to the Titans, so now they have a new left tackle for Taylor Hopkins. Tyrell Crosby goes to the Bucks. Eric Spruce goes to the Lions. Not really sure that makes any sense. I'm probably going to undo that one. I don't think a guy like Spruce would have went to the Lions considering they have. I'll check. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they have a guy who's, who's aging and I'm just not remembering. Wyatt Teller goes to the Titans. So the Titans are gearing up for Taylor Hopkins, solidifying their offensive line. Actually a very realistic move. Demarcus Lawrence also goes to the Titans. That is something that they needed. Anthony Fasano was a guy they drafted. I think that's who it was. I know they drafted a guy. He just has not worked out. They'll bring in Lawrence on a one year to hopefully hold him over. Maybe they go after one in the draft. Kaminsky goes to the Jets. They also needed a guy. Titans making spending some money, man. Bringing on Raekwon Davis for a one year. Malik McDowell goes back to the Seahawks. Yatur Gross Matos also goes to the Seahawks. That is a good fit. That is a very good fit. London Parks goes to the Panthers. Paul Hopkins to Washington. Andrew Elling to the Colts. That's good. They needed another linebacker out there. So that's that works out well for them. Kamal Martin goes to the Broncos. They desperately needed another linebacker. Joseph Peterson to the Bills. They also needed a linebacker. A lot of these decisions are actually pretty good. I'm a little surprised. The Giants going with more uh, veterans. They lost Stephon Gilmore this past year. The Lions going with a veteran, Nick Needham. Josiah Scott going to the, the Browns. Not too bad. Jaden Norris was in free agency. 24-year-old, 71 overall corner. That's not bad. 
The Eagles end up signing Jalen Tom Thompson. So I'm going to go and see if I can... I don't know why. Maybe because they already had the bid on him before I traded for Adderley, which does make sense. So I'll go and make sure and see if maybe Thompson can move to a strong safety or vice versa. One of them can, so that way their safeties are covered. Otherwise, I'm going to probably let go of Jalen Thompson. Now that our free agency is pretty much done with, all we really have to worry about now is the draft. So we're going to go ahead and switch gears, and we are going to start deep diving this draft a little bit before we get to draft day. As we turn our attention towards the draft, I wanted to check on the reactions tab here. There was nothing under the stories, but it looks like here there's one or two. Left guard Lamar Marshall continues to rise up boards. His incredible pro day was the last bit of confirmation teams needed. So there's another guard on the table possibly for us in the draft. Hearing the pro day of corner Damon Reese frustrated many scouts, refused to go off script and went through most drills at 75% effort. That's not good. Not good at all. Going down here to Matt Miller says, outside linebacker Jalen Basley didn't answer any of the questions I had about him at the Texas Tech Pro Day. Disappointing. Big decision, fifth year options. Oh, Connor McElroy. This is a tough one because he's going to cost a lot of money. But he's been really good for us too. I mean, he just hasn't really made any splash plays, but um, I mean, it's going to cost more to keep him. I, I think I would actually rather negotiate a deal with him than give him because that's going to be a big payday you know he was a first round pick so that's going to be like 10 11 million against the cap so i think we're going to hit no on this one and then we can we can always you know we can always negotiate a deal with him on the side without having the fifth year option in place so let's go ahead and no now it is time for us to take our final look at the draft class ahead of us before we get to the nfl draft and th this is this is still our guy Clayton Jenkins. You know, once we unlocked him and we saw that he had the the top five talent, we got his, his 100% un, undone. It, it's just sold on me. You know, like I'm done. I don't even care anymore. Like he is the guy that we're going to draft with our number three pick as long as nobody else takes him beforehand. I say, I say we just go to the draft and just do it. You know, why wait? There's not much else to see. We know who we want and we'll just, we'll just Go with it as it comes so let's go ahead and get to the draft all right so we are here it is draft time the rams are on the clock when you're a team like the rams and you've just had nothing but bad luck the last couple years you got a new quarterback what's the next thing you need aside from a quarterback you need a pass rush and when you're a team like the rams that has had a lot of bad seasons you just need to find the best playmakers you can and at this point in the draft, the number one pick, unless you're going to trade down, Marcus McElroy seems to be the pick. And I don't see that there's many people that desperately need a pass rusher that bad to come up to get him. So we're just going to stay put with the Rams and we're going to let him take Marcus McElroy as the number one overall pick. He's got hidden dev, which is good. I would expect that out of the top pick. 84 speed, 81 strength, 89 acceleration. Now it's the Broncos, and this one is where I really, I'm really torn on. Shore up that offensive line for Pritchard and give him a fair shake at being a starting quarterback. There it is. Another hidden dev. 6'7", 330 pounds, only 21 years old. Good strength. Decent speed and acceleration. Change of direction is bad, but that's with all these linemen. And that puts us on the board. And I'm not going to mess around. We're going to take the player I've been wanting to take for literally months. Maybe not months. However long the season's been going on for. I Yeah, he's 17 on the board. I don't care. I see that he's top five talent. I don't want to take McCain. We have guys his size. We need a big bodied guy. I want a legitimate shutdown number one corner for the future. We're going to go Clayton Jenkins here, third overall. I don't care if I'm reaching. I don't care if you don't like it. It is done. Hidden Dev, there we go. 6'3", 193, 21 years old. And he doesn't even have bad speed. Not great. He, I think he had great speed or good speed. He's got 93 speed and 94 acceleration. How does he have not elite speed? Unless, of course... Who know? Well, 
Maybe we'll see. Maybe these other corners have like 95, 96 speed or something like that. That's the only thing that would make sense to me. I'm still trying to figure out how this thing works. And now the Rams are on the board again. Let's see. What do the Rams need? I'm only going to do the first round for guys too. Once we get past the first round, unless there's some serious picks there, I'm just going to start simming. But let's take a look at the Rams now. They just picked up an edge rusher to go out here and who knows, battle it out with Chase, and I don't know what his overall is. Maybe he doesn't even get to start, but they get the top player in the draft. They have DTs. They just drafted front uh, defensive end, and they got Sidney Spikes from the Ravens a couple years back. Their line is pretty good. I mean, honestly, they could just take Lewis Holly here. You know? I mean, he's still on the board. Or they could trade down, see what their linebacker situation is like. Oh, that linebacker situation is bad. Okay. Well, let me see if there's any teams that would want to come up and what they would be coming up for. I, I don't know, man. I feel like Lewis Holly would be a play here if I were if I were the Rams. You got a new quarterback last year. Yeah, you got some old guys there, but bring in, you know, you get the top pass rusher and you get the top receiver in one draft to really turn the franchise around. That's what I do if I'm if I'm the uh, if I'm the Rams, I stay put and take who I want. I say we do it. Yeah, let's give the Rams Lewis Holly. He was a guy who was, at one point, he might have even been the consensus top pick in the draft. Oh, he ends up being normal? But he's got 93 speed at 6'5 and 91 acceleration. I'm surprised he's normal, but I, I'm not, I'm still, I still think it's a good move. And now the Seahawks are on the board. I already know who to go with for this for these guys. There we go. Oh, he's normal as well. But hey, they get the top quarterback. 92 throw power. 85 change of direction. I wonder if he's got a little wiggle to him. Given his height and size, I thought he would just be a, um, you know, just a, a, a pocket quarterback. But 85 change of direction, that's makes you wonder. And now it's the Bears on the board. I think I got it. Look at this. Look at this. They have Connor Fulton. And they have CJ Colvin. But then there's a huge drop off. And then, they, of course, they have Jalen Johnson. What if they went Jalen McCain? He's still left on the board here. It's starting It's starting to get to the point where he's going to start. The, you know, these corners will probably start to go. After reviewing the draft class, it looks like the Bears really don't need anything here in the top six. You know, the six pick. The stuff that they need is farther down the board. The Browns, however, they need a tackle bad, and they're willing to move up for it. So what they're going to do is they're going to send their first and second round pick this year and their fourth round this year to grab the sixth overall pick from the Bears. So now the Browns are on the board, and I already know who they want. They are coming up to get Nick Stocker, one of the last remaining top five projected players available. It fits an immediate need for them at the right tackle position and gives them some serious help on the offensive line. There we go, he ends up being normal, but a very good lineman hopefully for them. We'll see later on once we can see the actual overalls as to what he turned out. It looks like he's gonna be pretty good though. A awareness, A pass block, finesse, B pass block. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna have some pretty good stats to him. And now the Falcons are on the board and the Falcons are a team that they could really use a lot. We know that they tried to go all in on defenders that are aging and whatnot, but I think they're going to just stay here and they're going to take the last top five projected player in Kyle Barnett and find ways to get him on the field. He ends up being hidden dev, 82 speed, 89 acceleration. Should be a pretty good fit for them. And now the Cardinals are on the clock. The Cardinals are going to be rewarded for being patient and staying at their spot. And who they're going to end up getting to take is they are going to take Jalen McCain, the top corner, the guy we passed on here in the eighth pick. Hidden dev for Jalen McCain as well. 93 speed, 95 acceleration. So it looks like it's going to be a very fast corner class once again. Now with the Patriots on the clock, we are going to go ahead and we're going to continue this run on the defensive ends. I think uh, I'm trying to see here who's going to be the best fit for them. They could reach here for another receiver. Josh Hurts flew up the draft board. And while they have Terry McLaurin, they really have never had somebody, you know, 
burst onto the scene behind him. They have a lot of in-between guys, but nobody's really been able to separate themselves. And Josh Hertz was a name that, like I said, flew up the draft boards throughout the season with some good stories. And um, let's see if, if that's what we end up going with here. I'm just going to go to the receivers themselves. Because Glenn Owens and Gordon Fort were above Josh Hertz. And then he had a great, I think it was, I don't know if it was a combine or a, a final day or something like that. But he ended up showing out. So I think, yeah, I think we're going to stay here. And we're going to take Josh Hertz for the New England Patriots to help them secure their skill players. There we go. Josh Hertz, hidden dev, 93 speed, 91 acceleration, 96 agility, standing at 6'2", 201 pounds out of Ohio State. And now we're on to the Giants. And we are going to give the Giants the guy who shot up the draft boards with his fancy fast 40 time. And I think we're going to go ahead and take Roy Bins for New York. I know he's a little bit down here, but we know he's got the talent. It's a need for the team. 95 speed. Wow. Okay. 95 speed at corner. He is normal dev. But that is a lot of speed. 94 change of direction. Still standing at 6'3", 193. Same body frame as the as uh, Jenkins. But, of course, we had the dev with ours. Not as much speed. The Cowboys at number 11 end up getting a pretty good pick here. Justin Penn, the third tackle off the board. Definitely a need for this team. But we're going to go ahead and take him at 21 years old. And he ends up being hidden dev as well. The Cowboys try to rebuild that offensive line we know they've had good lines in the past washington is another team with a need at the cornerback position so what i think we are going to do is we're going to continue the trend here with corners getting taken up early and i think that because i know the the talent i think i should pretend that they would know that as well and leland hunter being the guy who's here has round one grade on it i think we go ahead and let let them get Leland Hunter instead of Micah Motes because we don't know much about Micah Motes. Okay, so Motes ends up, or Motes, Hunter ends up being normal dev, but he does have 92 speed and 93 acceleration. Every one of these corners has been super fast. Apparently that's just the norm now. No corners are below 92 speed. And now it's the Ravens on the clock and the Ravens, the Ravens need some edge rushers and what they're going to do is they're going to stop this fall that Jaden Green is going on. Green was at one uh, not at the top but he was pretty high up there and he's still here available we're gonna go ahead and give him to the ravens Jaden green ends up being normal dev as well but looks like he's got some speed behind him and he should add to that linebacker core really nicely in baltimore and now we are on the clock once again i'm trying to think of who we could take we have our choices between all of the guards still we also have a 30 second pick you got to remember that as well dom cooks is still available I'm just kidding. I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. I almost think we almost should just trade this pick away. We are going to go ahead and trade down with the Saints and let them move up four spots to jump over the next batch of teams that are looking for a defensive end in Tremaine Abbott. And in, in return, we're going to get a six round pick this year and a third round pick next year, along with their 18th overall pick. So, yeah, the Saints are paying a little bit, but. We're not going to make the same mistake the Vikings did in real life this year. We're actually going to get a good return on our investment. The Saints come up and they are going to take Tremaine Abbott, the guy who's been sitting on the board here for quite some time. And he ends up having hidden dev, 86 speed, 84 acceleration, 82 strength. He should fit right in nicely. Peyton Turner's never really developed for the Saints. And now he will go against him, I believe, to see who ends up starting at the beginning of the season. The Colts as well needed some help in the pass rushing game. And since they need somebody who can stand up, they're happy to sit here and take Jose Reese, who will be able to move to the outside linebacker position and help them with their pass rush. Hidden Dev, once again, 86 speed, 88 acceleration, very fast, very quick. He will help that uh, defense immensely. And now it's the Jets. The Jets sitting here with really one big glaring hole yet on their defense, and that is linebacker. And it's a tough question. Do they reach for Courtney Bowie? Or do they stay put and take Quincy Taylor to help out at defensive end where they signed John Kaminsky, but Kaminsky, 30 years old, he's a 78 overall. He's not going to be the guy for them going forward. 
But the idea of passing up the top linebacker when that is one of their biggest needs is too much for the Jets. So they are going to go back a little bit. And instead of taking the top player available, they're going to take the top player to them available. And that is Courtney Bowie, run-stopping middle linebacker. They have Quan Thompson. They drafted a guy last year, and now they need their last piece at the linebacker puzzle. Courtney Bowie looking to be that guy. Hidden Dev, 90 speed, 91 acceleration linebacker for the Jets. Wow. The Texans, instead of chasing down, you know, talent down the board, they're going to stay put and they're going to take the top guard that they know about, and that's Cole Cameron here to help shore up that line. They have guys, but they're getting older. They're not exactly the best overall. Cole Cameron can probably come in and compete day one to help that offensive line. Try it and squeeze out a little bit more of Dalvin Cook while they still have him. Cameron ends up being a hidden dev. Nice strength. Good acceleration. And now we sit here and we find ourselves on the clock once again. No clue on who to take. Do we take a guy like Quincy Taylor? No, we don't need him. We don't need Fasaro. We don't need Whittington. We don't need tackles. Nick Clements appears to be the guy, I think. We may not have got the top guy, but we do get a choice between Clements and Chamberlain. Let's take a look at these guys before we make a choice. So, Nick Clements... Great, 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 good, solid, good. He's top five in most of the categories, which is a big, which is big. He has A awareness, A injury, A lead block, C pass, C pass finesse. So he's not a pass blocker by any means. Looking at Chamberlain, he might not be, he does have better physicals, it looks like, just by a little bit. He's first in three categories on the combine. And then here, his injury is a C, but I am not too concerned about that. And it looks like he's just a little bit more balanced when it comes to run blocking and pass blocking. Plus, he is 21, so one year younger. He's a big-bodied guy. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take Jamie Chamberlain instead of Nick Clements. And there we go. Hidden Dev lineman. We got ourselves a guard. And now the Bears are back on the clock. Now, I remember they traded down with the... Um, who was it that they traded with? I can't even remember who it was. But either way, they traded back because they didn't exactly need anybody up top there. And the reason for that is because they need a linebacker. But they need a middle linebacker, not any linebacker. Streets has C-man coverage, which means to tell me that he might end up being a pretty decent cover linebacker. So with the 19th pick, the Bears are going to take the second linebacker off the board in Deontay Streets to help shore up that front seven. Another hidden dev, 87 speed, 91 acceleration, 22 years old out of South Carolina. Good pickup for the Bears. And now it's the Buccaneers on the clock. The Buccaneers don't have too many holes to address. So what we are going to do is we're going to stop passing up all... We're going to give them Nick Clements, the right guard. They needed some youth at the interior line, and they, they have some guys, but they're all above 30. We're going to go ahead and give them some more weapons to build to continue that offensive line for the future. Actually, what am I thinking? There's two tackles just chilling here. I think we're going to give them Justin Cherry, the top tackle on the board. All of their linemen are there. They have some good linemen, but they're all getting older. So we're going to go ahead. And we're going to give them Justin Cherry, the left tackle. Another hidden dev lineman, 87 strength, 82 acceleration, 21 years old out of Clemson. So the Panthers, after looking, don't have a whole lot of holes. So what they're going to do, they're going to go ahead and they're going to take a guy that at one point was the number two receiver on the board, which was Gordon Fort, stands 6'2", 225 pounds, a big-bodied receiver. They're going to bring him to Carolina. Actually, I was looking here, and it looks like Brandon Leonard, who had some uh, stories throughout the season, he looks like he might be a better fit for them. I mean, they're all round one to two. We know more about him, though. He's 21 years old. He's a deep threat. And he'd almost be like that, uh, you know, just that go up and get it guy. They have a couple of bigger bodies there, but this guy would really give them a good option in the slot. So we're going to go ahead and take Brandon Leonard here for the Carolina Panthers. Ends up being normal dev, but he's got 95 speed and 95 acceleration to go along with 92 agility. The Chargers are a team that also need some cornerback help. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to give them Micah Motes. He is a little bit on the shorter side, but they do have other guys there as well. And they're just trying to really get younger in the secondary. Motes ends up being normal dev, but he's got some really good speed. Once again, 94 speed, 91 acceleration, 94 change of direction, only 21 years old. The Raiders are sitting here and they're just like, why are these guys still available to us? And they're just not even going to wait around. They're just going to go right ahead and they're going to take Quincy Taylor, who has been sitting here waiting to be taken probably for about 10 picks now. He ends up being normal dev, but he's got some good strength. 22 years old out of Texas. The Eagles are sitting here and they could really use a defensive tackle or they could use a linebacker. They do at least have one defensive tackle. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take Luke, uh, Luke Leonard for Philadelphia. I just got to give it to him. He is top of the line on all on all the physicals. We're going to go ahead and give Philadelphia a new defensive tackle to go along with Paul Dugans. Hidden Dev D tackle. 94 strength. Wow. Giants are on the board here once again. And there we go. He has Hidden Dev. 92 speed. 92 acceleration. 93 change of direction. And 95 jumping. That is a go up and get it kind of guy. And now we're down to the Lions. I'm not 100% sure where to go for the Lions. They have a good front seven or a good front four with the D-line. They have a good line. They don't need running backs. I said we go Ladarius Whitfield. I feel like he just had a story not too long ago. No, we're going to go Glenn Owens. He's the, He's been up here. He's been at the top of the draft for most of the time. I just feel like Whitfield might be... Actually, you know what? I think this would be a good spot. They need linebackers. I almost forgot about this. But they need linebackers, and they need them bad. And I know Luke Leonard wasn't the, the second choice between him and Streets, but I th say at this point, even if he doesn't have the best coverage, they just need linebackers. So let's go ahead and let's take Luke Leonard for the Lions and help shore up that linebacker core. And they get themselves a hidden dev. Great speed. Wow, 88 and 90. Good there. He should be a day one starter for them. They they have like nobody there. And now it comes down to the Jaguars. Yeah, I think we should go Dom Cooks here. We know more about him. He fits more of a 3-4 end role. Yeah, let's go Dom Cooks for, for the Jaguars here. Ends up being normal dev, but he's got some great acceleration, some good agility, some good strength. And I think he'll fit in really well there on the D-line for Jacksonville. And now we're at the Chiefs. I think this might be the spot where the first safety goes off the board. There was one up here. I think his name was Bradley. Yeah, Jeff Bradley. First to second round talent. It doesn't have them in here as a fit, but they have Tyron Matthew right now, and he is ancient. And behind him, they have a 62 overall player. So this guy can come in, he can learn for a year, get a little bit better, and then step in to take over the strong safety position for them alongside Justin Gardner. All right, Jeff Bradley is taken. 87 speed, 88 acceleration, 85 change of direction. We'll have to wait and see what his overall is and maybe see. It says his tackle is B, so hopefully he fits that role of a run support safety that they're going to need. And finally, the Bills are on the clock. Terrence Whittington is going to go to... The Bills, here at the end of the first round, ends up getting Hidden Dev, 88 speed, 83 excel, only 21 years old. He'll fit right in, probably be day one starter looking at what they had. They didn't have very much. 49ers are now on the clock, and they, from what I remember, they need a center. I know that the top center is still available, and this would be a good spot for him to go. They do need one. Look at this. Two older guys here. They have some stuff around them. Yeah, I think that would be a good move here. Go center. I don't see there being any other glaring holes right now for them. They could use another outside linebacker, but there's just not one available right here. Let's go ahead and let's take him here. Good pick for the 49ers at the back end of the first. Hidden Dev, there we go. 85 strength, 85 acceleration, 72 speed. He might be able to start for them. I can't wait to see these overalls. I sort of like that they don't have him here, but... I would almost rather them hide it until like the end of preseason. I don't know if you guys remember when Madden used to do that, where it was just question marks on all of your players and you had to decide throughout preseason 
if they played good enough to stay on your roster and you wouldn't decide and you wouldn't find out their overall until they played enough or till the end of preseason. I, I thought that was awesome. I would love to have something like that. And now we're back to the Steelers. Steelers is a team that we played in the Super Bowl. And there was one thing that the Steelers had an issue with when they played us, and that was really their blocking up front. Nick Clements could be a good option here. They don't need anything else. I, and the guard is there. We know the guard is going to be a pretty good guy. You know I mean? He's round one to two talent, so we know he's, he's good to go in this spot. And there's nobody left for guards. That, well, anyway, that's what it looks like. I mean, look at all this. These are all listed as... There's one guy here, Cody Walker, that we could potentially, you know, mess around with later in the seventh. But right now, this is the last guy top towards the draft. So let's go ahead and let's take Clements and help the Steelers offensive line get a little bit better. There we go. Another hidden dev guard. That should bode well for the Steelers. And now we are on the board with our third first round selection. Hmm. Honest to God, guys, I don't even know who I want here. We don't need a tackle. Definitely don't need a running back or a receiver. We don't need a tight end as much as I would like Kyrie Hughes. He's the top tight end this year. I just honestly don't know who to take. I feel like we should trade out of this. Just stockpile picks for, for the future. We already had two first round picks. But who would we, who would we give this pick to? Who still needs a player? Okay, so what I've decided to do is, since I don't really know if I want anybody in the, this high in the draft anymore, I don't think we have any needs, and even if we did, the players we would need are not up on the board right now, so I would rather trade back, refuel for next year, take a later round pick later on for some depth, and you know let a team come up that needs one of the players still on the board. The Bills are one of those teams. They don't have any picks until the third round, so... They'll package their first and fourth next year along with their fifth this year to come back up into the first round and they will take that tackle that has been sitting out here. And he should be able to assist them after Deion Dawkins ends up flying the coop. And he's a hidden dev. Good trade up for the Bills. Well, at least it looks like it. He's got hidden dev, so we know he's good at something. 87 strength, 78 acceleration. And he's only 21. And a big man, too. 6'8", 329 pounds. Now that we are out of the first round, I'm going to stop picking for the teams. I just like doing the first round because, I mean, obviously we know that they'll mess it up. They had teams that just drafted a first-round quarterback taking first-round quarterbacks again this year. So now I'm just going to start simming, and I'll you know discuss the picks. But I have no control over this part. We don't pick until the end of the second. I don't foresee us moving up to get somebody. And now we are on the board once again here. To, and there's still not many, you know, just nothing here that really floats my boat. Luke Browning, a guard. We already took a guard, though. I don't really know much about Jason Moore. You know, I'm just looking. And the only one I can really see here would be Ra Raymond Monty. But now I feel like I'd be reaching for him at this point. Let's just see what he looks like. Because this is the guy I'm always told to take a safety. He's got a 4'7 speed. Why the heck would I take him? Oh, our, our GM is nuts, man. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have any reason to take these guys. Dwayne Williams is still sitting here. the first round prospect at wide receiver. But we don't really need a wide receiver. You know, just looking around here, we definitely don't need a running back. We don't really need a wide receiver. I know we got rid of a few, but I don't really intend on bringing more in. We don't need tight ends. We don't need tackles. There's none here anyway. I decided I'm gonna trade down again. It's probably the last time in this round in this draft that we do. But I'm just I just really don't have anybody I want to take here. There's a few players I'd be interested in possibly taking, but not at this early in the draft. So we're gonna trade down to the later part of the third, pick up a fifth next year, and the Raiders can move up here. Now all the safeties are going. Son of a biscuit. Now I don't feel like I have to trade up. I want to get Monty. I was hoping he would fall to our next pick, but now I feel like. He's not going to make it. Okay. Um, shoot. We're going to have to trade up with the devil here in the Seahawks. I have to overpay for this too. I, I work this like a real draft. I'm not trying to, to fleece anybody. So if we want their third round pick, we are going to have to... How stupid of me. I could have. I should have just taken them. I should have just taken them, guys. I really should have just taken them. All right. So I'm actually overpaying by quite a bit here. 
it says that I'm overpaying. Says I'm overpaying by like 200 points here, a little over 200 points. But because of the run on safeties, I feel like if a team was going to trade up, I'm going to have to trade up and pay more than what I should have to pay because of other teams possibly trying to get that pick or themselves wanting to take a player. So because of that, we're going to trade the third we just got with one of the fifths we just got and a fifth that we... So we're taking an L in this in this draft right now because I could have just taken the guy I wanted that I was hoping to get, but I didn't foresee the run on safeties coming so quickly. So I'm going to have to just take an L. Um, and uh, yeah, so there it is. Good thing we didn't need that many players in this draft, but uh, definitely not what I was expecting. I really thought that the safeties were going to last a little bit more, but now because all the safeties in front just fell off the board, I'm just going to jump up and I'm going to take Raymond Monty because that was the guy that I was told to take by the GM. And you guys know, man, I remember telling you guys last year, every time they tell me to take a safety, I don't, and they end up being good. So I'm just going to trust my gut with the with the uh, GM, and we're going to take Raymond Monty here. Uh, let's do it. Okay, so normal dev. Oh my god, he has 84 speed. All right, well, we'll mark this one up as an L. All right, now we're on the board for two straight selections. After that L we took with uh, Monty, um, I'm just going to stay put here and take a couple of players that could be depth players or possible futures players for us. I think we're going to take Bo... Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to take Kevin Allman. We know a little bit about him. I mean, he's not the greatest linebacker there is, but at least we know something. We know he's a run stopper. We'll take, we're going to take Kevin Allman with one of our picks here. All right, so he doesn't have bad speed. That's good. We'll see how that comes out. And we have one more selection here as well. Curtis Waddle. I'm pretty sure he was once the top safety and he fell down the board. I remember this guy. He was he was the best safety or like the top safety. And then he had he got kicked off the team. That's what happened to him. He got kicked off the team. I forgot all about him. I, I knew there was a player that fell at safety, but I couldn't remember. Now I saw his name. Boom, that's him. He got kicked off the team or something or whatever. So he was gone all season long. We're going to go ahead and take him too. We're going to double down on safety because I feel like I really messed it up with Monty. Okay, so he's normal, but he's got better speed at least. So we'll see what happens from that. We have two safeties now to look at. Here in the fourth round, I think what we're going to do is we are going to take one of these wide receivers. Just trying to think of who. I think I'm going to go for Byron Harris. Just feels weird not taking a receiver. So we're just going to take Byron Harris. Decent speed. I don't expect some of these guys even make the roster, but I really don't even know what to do with the rest of with the rest of our picks. All right, now we're here at the end of the fifth round, and this is a good spot, I think, for us to... For some reason, Jermaine Wiley is still on the board. I'm not sure why, but I think I want to take him. I didn't expect him to be here. Same with Trey Franklin, but I really don't have a, even really a remote spot for him. But Jermaine Wiley is just sitting here. So let's just take a flyer on him and just see. I don't know why. I mean, block shedding is an F. Okay, well, that, <laughs> that doesn't really help. Um, okay, maybe that's that's why people are passing on him. So I wonder if we should take one of these quarterbacks. I am going to go ahead and take one of these quarterbacks. They're just falling down the board now, and we'll have a competition going for our backup. So um, I think what we're going to do, though, is we're going to take... We're going to take Nick Taylor. He had a late surge. It looks like his body build looks points me in the direction of somebody who is more of a scrambler type. Yeah, so let's go ahead and take Nick Taylor. No idea what he's going to be, but it looks like he's got some speed to him, so that's good. Back on the clock here in the sixth round, 4-5-3. All right, we're going to take Derek Gills here because what else do we have to lose? There we go. Derek Gills is a... Practice squad running back. And that's it. That's the end of our draft. Let's see what we ended up coming out of the draft with this year. Seems like we had a lot of picks, and I'm not too confident in some of these picks. So, Okay, so Clayton Jenkins ends up being a 78 overall. Thank the Lord for that. 
see his ratings. 93, 75 man, 72, 71. E. Okay, not the greatest, but it's it's manageable. We'll work with it. We'll work with it. Jamie Chamberlain ends up being a 73 overall. So that's pretty awesome. Raymond, Raymond Monty ends up being a 74. I thought I failed this pick. And he ends up being a 74 overall. So it's just his speeds. Oh, his hit power is an 85. Oh, this is going to be good. I think I have an idea now. Oh, yes. Kevin Allman, he ends up being a 67. Not too bad. Curtis Waddle ends up being a 68. And now I feel stupid for drafting him because we, you know, we didn't. I thought we, I fumbled that Monty pick. I really, really did. Byron Harris ends up being a 66. He ends up having 91 speed, not bad. 79 catching traffic. It's something we can work with. Nick Taylor ends up being a 62. Okay, so apparently that push didn't really matter. And then our final pick is Derek Gills, who is a 61. So neither of those guys will probably end up making the roster. Um, actually, it doesn't even pay. I'm just going to cut them right now. I, I don't care. Just cut both of them. Doesn't matter. We'll keep the rest of them. And let's see what happened with the rest of the first rounders. So McElroy ends up being a 77 overall for the Rams. Jacoby McAllister, a 74. We know Clayton Jenkins is a 78. Lewis Holly ends up being a 75. Kenny Clark, or Kenny, Christian Clark ends up being a 75. Nick Stocker, 73. Kyle Barnett, a 74. 79 for Jalen McCain. Josh Hertz, 73. Roy Bin, 76. Justin Penn, a 70. Leland Hunter, a 70. A lot of good corners. Jaden Green. Tremaine, Tremaine Abbott, Jose Reese, Courtney Bowie ends up being a 77. That's going to be pretty nice for the Jets once he moves outside. Cole Cameron. So we got the better of the... Well, Cameron ends up being one overall less than Chamberlain. So that's that's cool. Deontay Streets end up being a 75. Justin Cherry a 72. Brandon Leonard, the receiver for the Panthers, ends up being a 77. That's better than, um, uh, what's his face? Lewis Holly. Micah Motes, a 76. Quincy Taylor falling to the Raiders. He's a 74. Kenny Facero, a 77 overall late in the first quarter, or first half. Yeah, late in the first round. Gordon Ford, a 74. Luke Leonard being a 77. That's Dom Cooks ends up being a 73. This is the guy that I wanted. I, the way at the beginning of the year. So he ends up being a pretty decent pickup for the Jaguars. Jeff Brat. Oh, I, I missed on that one. Sorry, Chiefs. He was the first round graded safety. I, how is he worse than all the other safeties? He's worse than the dude we picked in the fifth round. I hate this sometimes. Terrence Whittington, he fell to the Bills at 29. He ends up being a 73 overall. Earl Kitchens, a 70. Nick Clements, a 73. Ronnie Hood, a 70. Round two, Mikliad, Owens, Hitchcock. Look at these run all of these running backs going. I'm just trying to see if there's any crazy people, like 77 or something. Oh, Damon Reese ended up being a 76, the corner that fell right before the draft started. Steven Pleasant, the safety drafted by the Falcons, ended up being pretty good. 75 overall and hidden dev. Sheesh. Tremaine Harrion. End of the third. Nice pick for the Eagles. And he's hidden dev. And he's a power back. That's interesting. Tavares Smith was a guy I was considering taking for a bit. He ends up being a 68. 
Bo Sheldon was another guy I considered taking. He ended up being a 68. So it looks like from uh, from this one here, it looks like Chamberlain's going to end up being the starter for us. He's the highest rated guard. Well, of course, we'll see who plays better between him and Mike Lewis. You know, going into going through preseason, we'll make sure that we make the right call. You know, we'll make sure that him and Lewis both get time and that we make the best decision for the team. But as of right now, he's the best by two overall. All right, there we have it, guys. End of the draft. And that means it is the end of our off-season video. It's been a long one, but, you know, these kind of things just take time. And this off-season wasn't as spectacular as I guess it could be, but when you come off of a Super Bowl win, you don't exactly need a bunch of pieces. So there wasn't a lot of turnover. We did move on from a couple of veterans like Mike Hughes, Taylor Hopkins, um, even guys like Derek Wilcox. But we, we retooled where we needed to retool. We got the guy that I've been saying I wanted for about since the beginning of last season when we saw the draft class in Clayton Jenkins. And um, that's where we're going to end it. So I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on that bell notification so you know every time I upload. And I'll see you guys next time.